Okay, hello, this is Chris Park from Arcing Games. I'm here today to get my butt kicked by the AI in AI War 2. Um, I tried this uh, last week and made a recording um, with my uh, daughter in tow, and that really was not a great idea to uh, do that, but that was a good test. I also did not have a very good mic with me at the time, and I was getting quite distracted um, answering people's questions as I was going. So I'm going to try to answer people's questions as I go, but at the same time, um, I'm going to try and maintain a little more focus than I had before. Um, I'm going to be playing, so I'm going to go on in to a custom start. Uh, I'm not going to go with any of the quick start scenarios, although if you're new to the game, that's certainly a good way to get in. Um, the custom start screen is not really as intimidating as it looks, um, mainly because it's just a lot of optional stuff that you can do. Um, so if you want the map to be a specific way, there's a bunch of map types. There's a bunch of layouts. You can change how they're named. You can change what the seed is so that it generates you a different thing. Woohoo. That's cool stuff, but you don't have to memorize any of that factions there's you there's the ai you can add some more stuff if you want you can change your colors you can make some balance shifts if you want to you can change your starting fleet and battle station i'm not gonna the ai starts out at difficulty five by default that's pretty low i'm gonna put it on nine which is too high um incidentally we have had somebody win on um difficulty 10 slash 10 slash 10 Recently, we consider that a quote-unquote bug, as with the first game. And so, um, in that, um, you know, we're going to need to work on the balance of the higher difficulties for people who are a lot better at the game than I am. So, I will thoroughly lose at difficulty 9. That's fine. I'm going to put in... So, at this point, I can add in some more factions, including additional AI factions if I want to. Um, I'm going to put in the risk analyzers, because they make it harder. Um, I'm also going to put in the nano cost because they make it more crazy. Um, I'm going to make it so that they hate everybody and their intensity. I'm going to put them up to nine risk analyzers. I'm going to leave that at five. I, I just don't feel like doing more than that. Um, put in the marauders, have them hate everybody at hostile to all there. And I'll put them at diff uh, strength nine as well. So this should be a pretty, pretty big, uh, Battle Royale should make it so that I lose quicker than I otherwise would, which is nice. There's a bunch of other options here. This can be intimidating to look at. You don't have to look at any of this. Some of these things can be changed later once you actually start up the game. Um, others of them, you know, have to do with how exactly the map is seated or kind of the general nature of how the game is played. Um, and so being able to adjust that after the game starts wouldn't be a good idea. So um, we'll call this, get a new campaign name down here. We'll call it Chris Dies, and we'll start it. So hopefully I'm able to impart some knowledge about how to actually play the game without, um, without being boring about it. And so... Um, there are some other people that have been making some YouTube series and they're actually better at explaining the game than I am because they had to learn how to play the game and um, that's an inherent advantage to that. Okay, so um, I get stuck with trying to explain things uh, because there's a mixed audience here too of people from uh, who knew the first game and people who did not. And so, for instance, there's a lot of things from the first game that don't really apply anymore. I <clears throat> am, uh, ostensibly, I've wasted 51 seconds at this point, but not really. Because I've got um, ships are automatically constructing. The ones that seem to be uh, disappearing are actually stacking up. So as they, uh, like, um, do that, you'll see they're going into stacks of units. So there's, like, two of those. The icons are something that you find hard to see at the default scale, which sometimes I do. You can go into personal settings. You know, it depends. I say sometimes I do, because right now I'm playing on a 
a 17 inch monitor i think it's my laptop um sometimes i play on a 54 inch tv so the icons are freaking huge on the tv and it looks great and for a lot of people that use a larger monitor the icons are a great size and we had to kind of go back and forth with uh, getting the size to be uh, something that people would be comfortable with um and there's never going to be something that's comfortable for everyone um so in this particular case the um i haven't messed with this in a while maybe it's in the hud shoot ship icon scale yep it's in the hud um so i'm going to just move that up to 2.0 and i think we'll all be able to see this a lot better now so okay now we've got our force field thing um, I can hover over this fleet and see, okay, down there at the bottom, it's got 40 out of 40 of all the main stuff built, and then the Mark uh, 1 frigate done. Minute, 28 seconds in, I haven't really done anything, but other um, automated stuff has worked. So in the position that I'm at here, um, and this is building ah, some more fusion bombers and some drones and stuff, okay. So in the position that I'm at, I've got four direct neighboring planets, which is not normally what I would choose on my own. Now out of these, I can hover over some things. There's a distribution node down here. Um, that's something that I can go and uh, destroy and get some science, which would be nice. Um, uh, there's an advanced research station over there, which will let me add a new ship line to one of my existing fleets. Um, right now I have one offensive fleet. It's this one centered on a transport flagship. I can see on the galaxy map here, there's another transport flagship over here. This one has Pike Corvettes, Fusion Bombers, Gunbots, and Parasitic Pike Corvettes. So that's probably going to be your first target if you've got a um, um, flagship that's neighboring you. It's a good way to go ahead and get your hinterland uh, um, shored up a little bit in general. Now you'll notice I've got eight strength that's mobile and I've got zero strength that's like defensive, like turrets and so on. This um, planet has 11 strength, this one has 4, 4, 12, and there's a question mark by the 12 because it um, that was 12 the last time I saw it, which was when the game started. It gave me the basic intel for it, but I don't have active vision here. When I look in here, you can see these are the, all the ships that um, were at the planet as of the last time I saw it. And there's kind of a distortion filter on here, but, um, um, but I don't know if, if there could be some giant new fleet that's pulled in there and I would not know. So that's what the little question mark's about. Um, yes, the space bar is your pause button in this game. We took away P being the pause button because we needed to use that for the planet um, sidebar. There's also, um, you can hit the pause button as well. I don't know really why you would want to. Um, so very first thing, as soon as I move this fleet off of this planet, I'm going to get attacked because when the hunter fleet, if it happens to be around, I'm not sure where it is. Um, it's not anywhere I can see at the moment, but it's around somewhere and it's probably coming over nearby to, to lurk. Um, the hunter fleet would show up before too terribly long if I... Um, Gunth. So where's the really strong areas? Hmm. Iverson. I'm going to put stuff near Iverson, I guess. Um, I'm holding down <laughs> holding down shift to uh, sorry, that doesn't work. Holding down control to put several at once. Um, so the hunter fleet is likely to come and beat my butt if I'm not careful with uh, leaving something behind. Something to defend in this case, turrets. Um, and so I'm gonna put some turrets around here so that when I take my offensive fleet away, I'm not having the AI come in and just absolutely murder me. Um, I'm also gonna put down some station keeping uh, frigates here 
which are um, interesting. Did those just stack? Looks like those just went all on top of themselves. That's not really how that's supposed to happen, but that's okay. Um, so these frigates that I have, um, I can put them in pursuit mode by hitting V. That's what we used to call free roaming defender mode. So they will go around and do whatever it is they need to do to defend the planet. Some custom fleets that I can build if I wanted to, to reorganize some plan uh, ships of mine, but I don't need to do that. Um, okay. And I'll go ahead and build some more engineers because I am metal rich right now. And um, so them being able to help me say I've got 1.8 something odd million at the uh, metal at the moment because I've just kind of been sitting around as I shoot the breeze explaining things and um, right so I'm going to be going to Bat Batara this is actually the real orientation of the planet if you use your fourth mouse button if you happen to have a four or five button mouse then you can pan the view like this or you can hold the Q button and then move the mouse like this and it, a lot of people say this serves no functional purpose, and I kind of agree because a top-down view is good enough. But I remember my chess teachers. I was never all that great at chess, but I was in chess club. I remember them always saying, you know, look at the board from different angles. You'll see different things. And I remember having my queen taken at an angle on some times in chess tournaments when I was looking at it from kind of the top back, you know, where I would normally sit and I just didn't see something was happening. Um, so it's just kind of a, uh, almost, I don't want to say a nervous tick, but it's certainly a habit of mine to just turn my view a lot to just feel like I have an understanding of what's happening. So um, you can see that my strength is getting a lot higher on here. Obviously the mobile strength is not because I'm building turrets. So my turret strength is now now up to eight it was six a second ago now you notice i have um full active vision oh boy um we'll talk about this in a second a full active vision on this planet um because it's adjacent to one of the planets i control and um so the warden fleet showed up there and i can see that that happened um, you know, it automatically went to strength 17. Now here's, here's a, a tip, essentially. When you look at these numbers, you see I've got 8, they've got 17. I'm going to lose if I go in there, right? Maybe. Probably not. And the reason for that is that I'm able to rebuild really constantly, especially with the amount of metal I have, 1.31 million at the moment still compared to what they have. So as I'm taking losses, I'm gonna be rebuilding those losses automatically and constantly. Rebuilt ships automatically come out at your flagship as long as you have a factory, in which case, at the moment, I have one factory on this particular planet. Um, factories right here. Um, well, actually, I have a combat factory and I've got a, a regular factory somewhere or other. Um, I think F, nope, that's not it, C, F, yep. If you hold down C and then hit F, then you can see your other factory. So I've got a regular factory here. And as long as I've got that on, a, on the same planet or an adjacent planet to me, um, then they will uh, automatically have ships churning out of my um, flagship. So that gives me a substantial advantage over what looks like an overwhelming force over here. Now there's 18 strength here. Holy cow, what's happening? These guys are deciding to head to Iverson for some reason. Why are they doing that? All right, they decided that they're gonna guard here. <laughs> um, okay, part of the reason they're doing that, all right, so I'm gonna hit one to select this fleet and I'm gonna put them into pursuit mode and let them go fight. Um, so the AI judged itself to be strong enough to make a raid in on me. Now this is the hunter fleet. The hunter fleet is actively 
after you. Um, I don't know how well you guys are able to hear me, but I am having trouble hearing um, a bit. So I'm going to just turn down the volume of the combat a little bit. Okay, so the Hunter Fleet has made a bid for me to uh, to see what they can do. The Warden Fleet moved out of the way, at least temporarily. It looks like they may have gone back now. Probably the Hunter Fleet moved out of the way to Iverson because they figured that was where they were more needed. The Warden Fleet's not allowed to come into my planet, so I do not have to worry about them attacking me. They have a different board in, border, and I can hover over them and see that down there at the bottom it says AI Warden Fleet. If I'm having trouble hovering, I can hit spacebar and then hover over it. Um, the ones that say AI Sentinels are the ones that kind of hang out at whatever planet they're at at the time, and then um, may or may not act independently and attack you, or they may, um, if they're left, th that's after you stir them up, basically. Once they've been aggroed, then they're able to do something other than just guard. They can come out and attack you, or join the hunter or warden fleets, as the case may be, um, after a certain amount of time. It really kind of depends. Um, I have an enormous advantage against the... Um, Hunter fleet here, you can see that there's a battle here, and it's showing, if I hover over that, it shows that, you know, I've got a total of 20 strength, um, and they had a total initially of, I think, six, four, something like that. I didn't see exactly. So the hunter fleet is gone for the moment. Um, they did cost me some metal mainly, but that was about it. I hit the one key to select my first strike group again, the my Zeberg. Uh, strike force. And I'm going to hit V again to take them out of pursuit mode so that they'll just do what I say. Um, now I'm going to go over to Batara. Now I still have Zeberg um, selected and when they come through they'll come through the Murdoch wormhole. Now I could hold control and uh, click on the wormhole and uh, send them through that way or I could send them through on the galaxy map like that. But in this particular case I would be just as happy to, um, he, 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 there goes the warden. I would be just as happy to give direct orders from the other planet. So I'm going to say attack the AI command station. This is something people have wanted for a long, long time in the first game and in this game too, is cross planet attack orders. And that was something we never had until just recently. Um, and so, um, Thanks to Badger for adding that in, because that was a big deal. Um, if my flagship gets crippled, which means gets down to 10% um, of its maxed health. Um, <laughs> the AI is taunting me here. Um, Uh-oh, what's this? Marauders. Well... I'm just going to keep my stuff away from them. Look at that. The AI is moving to fight the Marauders because the Marauders are the more threatening thing at the moment. Got a War Seizure, several Guardians, a bunch of Pulsar tanks. Um, okay, these ships are not listening to me because they have been tractored by a tractor guardian of the AI Hunter Fleet and they're being dragged off. The AI is actually dragging off the Marauders as well, which is phenomenal news for me. I'm over here getting shot a lot, and um, I'm gonna try and get this stealth guard post down. We'll see if I can get that down quickly enough. But essentially, uh-oh. Um, Essentially, I'm not able to rebuild quickly enough to take on what's there. Um, I've got two mobile strength at the moment on this planet. The AI has six, and there's eight of other stuff. So that would be the um, Marauders and the Hunters. So I'm outnumbered um, five to one. Now, if I built a command station here, I could work on capturing that fleet, which is why I came over here in the first place. But I may just need to retreat to Murdoch 
and then rebuild um, in the short term. This was kind of a difficult start, to be honest. Um, I'm going to go back through here. Now, one of the cool things about this game, um, so you can hit one and it just selects your entire uh, fleet, even if they're not on your current planet. So one of the cool things about this game is that you can fast forward as much as you want and it doesn't use any extra CPU load. Um, so in this particular case, I'm now on 4X fast forward by hitting the plus key four times. And so I'm able to rebuild my fleet really, really quickly. Now I can also see things moving around quicker over here. The hunter fleet is, they're not coming after me. Um, they see that I've got a combined 20 strength on this planet. I think they're going around the side. Are they going to Gunth? Yeah, they are. They will sometimes go around the corner and hang out. So it's a good chance I'm going to get ambushed by the hunter fleet when I go back to Batara. Let's see if that happens. Um, now everything here I want to be on pursuit mode from my current planet. Um, I'm going to click to Gunth. Uh-oh. Holy cow. It's the Warden and the Hunter fleet. Um, wowzers. I'm getting trashed. That's okay. Run away! The Hunter can follow me. The Warden cannot. Um, I'm still on 4x fast forward in order to just keep things spiffing along. Come on, Hunter. You want to follow me? I know you do. Oh, they're too smart for me. All right, so the warden interesting. All right, that's good for me. The marauders are attacking Iverson. Now the marauders can actually capture this planet, and they're about to. Looks like. Um, so you'll notice this planet now does not belong to the AI anymore. Um, the marauders will clean this planet out. Yeah, there come the hunters. Now, the Marauders are quite strong. Mm. Whether or not they're going to win, I can't tell. I've got a wave that's going to be coming after me in three minutes of game time. But I'm... Uh... All right. Let's... Jeez, 22 strength on Batara still, though? The Warden is nuts. They're pretty pissed. Um... All right, this is bananas. I'm not really worried about defending against the wave that's coming in. Oh, well, strength 14, pike corvettes, 454 pike corvettes. I can probably take that without my fleet. Um, all right, run away. Hold control and push through, and here they come home. Engineers can help repair things, including my shield one. Some of the AI guys are coming after me. Those would have been ones that were threat. And the AI and the AI has arrived. All right, I'm going to put them on pursuit mode in here. Now, it's worth noting I've essentially gotten. Oh Lord, the hunter I think has come after me. Yep, the oh not good. I have a home field advantage, so there is that. But if they get my um, home command station, that's curtains for me, so that's really not good. All right, we're better. <laughs> um, I could still lose this, like, in the short term, be just because they could get my, you know, my king unit is my home command station, and if they get that, that's it. All right, my stuff is rebuilt. Everybody's happy. Hooray. Okay. So, yeah, Batara is bonkers indeed. 
you do not need to have a supply line to a forward or mobile factory to build far away from your planets. Um, there was something along those lines way earlier in development for the game, but that is not the case anymore. Um, that was really irritating to play against. Hey, Batara is not bonkers anymore. Um, okay, so the Warden is passing through, heading to Gunth. Um, looks like the Marauders are they left a couple of zombies behind but uh that's it so um dang it this is an oh oh uh oh what's going on down here that's what's going on the marauders are systematically how did they even get over there? They must have gone through Murdoch while I was in the middle of that big fight. And they didn't care enough about me to bother trying capturing that planet. They went for a planet that was far weaker. Now the Marauders will actually capture planets and set up bases if they can. Um, oh dear God. Um, got quite a fight going on on Murdoch here. Run home. Oh god, it's bombers. That's not good. Okay. Um numerically we've got even odds at the moment, but um crud. Crud 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 Mm-hmm. That's one of the perils of playing on four times speed. You really shouldn't. Um, all right, let's have a better start. Um, so I've lost. Um, this was a rough one. So, and, I, you know, I wanted to lose. I, I came in um, with the idea that, you know, let's lose. But, um, uh all right, I'm going to do difficulty nine again. I just also got really unlucky with where the first starting thing is. I got particularly unlucky in that I was playing on difficulty uh, nine, and it was so any lack of luck is kind of amplified. You really need to have a higher skill level than I do in order to deal with that. But um, I will put it in the Dyson Sphere too. Why not? Um, we'll make it strong. And. Um, Never did see the nano cost. I'm sure they were fighting the AI in the background, but uh, they never got near us. Um, last time I did this, uh, the I call this Chris dies too. Last time I did this, the um, AI was uh, so I can hit B to get to the sidebar here. The the nano cost showed up, but I never saw the Marauders last time. So um, the planet layout is the same. Um, and the names are the same, but all the procedural stuff is different. So this time I want to go to Gunth. Um, Batara still happens to be the strongest thing. There's an ARS there. Um, <laughs> all right. So what I will do, first of all, um, get that on our engineers. Those ambush turrets there and put some there. Concussion turrets over here. Grenade launchers. Um, pike turrets. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put a couple of tractor arrays over there on those to. Uh, Try and hold the AI kind of at arm's length, you know, the whole you're not touching me thing with um, um, so the tractors will grab them. I should have done that before. The ambush ones get a bonus for ships that have just come through a wormhole, so I put those near the nearest wormhole, and then I cluster the rest of my turrets around my command station. 
Um, and I'm using the classic fleet, which is the basic one, so I have the same starting stuff again, but there's actually several starting fleets. And if we look at the fleet that I'm going to capture here, this is again very different. So this time, Pike Corvettes, Ablet of Gatlings, Concussion Corvettes. You know what else we should have done last time, but I was too distracted talking, is we should have unlocked some text. That really would have been very helpful. So you can unlock stuff for weapons or for hulls, and um, in both cases, all they do is um, increase the mark level by one for the related ships and or structures. Now, um, excuse me, the purpose behind increasing the mark level is that a bunch of stuff goes up, like ship cap goes up and their um, attack power goes up and a whole bunch of other things. But the reason I point out that, quote unquote, all it does is increase the mark level by one is you'll notice the difference in costs. So the hulls are expensive. They benefit a ton of ship lines, especially as you get more and more ship lines. The weapons are cheaper. They benefit fewer ship lines. Really, really early on in here, um, it's a good idea to focus on the ones that are um, related to things that I have. So I'm going to go ahead and do concussion. Um, that'll help. My tur some turrets and some corvettes. I'm going to do the pike turrets. No, not really. The fusion stuff for bombers and the station keeping salt frigates. Absolutely, yes. Um, let's be easier to take out guard posts with those upgraded twice, even. So let's get ahead on that. The V wing, this generalist thing. Uh, sure, let's get them up by one level. Um, I still have 8,000. Um, Bits, I, um, you know, I could make my force field stronger. That's expensive. Um, but, you know, certainly would make me a lot less likely to die. Given the fact that I'm playing such an overpowered enemy um, compared to my skill level, let's go with that. All right, so my force fields are better now, too. I've got a bunch of Mark II stuff instead of just Mark I stuff, and we'll see how this goes this time. Um, pretty much all of my things have finished constructing, except for, it looks like, a couple of my station-keeping frigates. The station-keeping frigates can't leave the, current, the planet that they're guarding. There are um, these things called um, battle stations or citadels, and they're able to build turrets which can be uh, moved around um, as well. And you can see these ones came from this planet, or no, they, they came from that, um, sorry, they came from that battle station. These pike turrets came from the current planet. We'll get more turrets of all sorts um, all over the place coming up for too long but I want to wait too long before we attack so let's come on over here so there's a small bit of warden stuff going on here they were just passing through they went to Batara okay so Batara is nuts again this makes sense I'm not surprised that Batara is um, consistently a uh, choke point because probably the warden and the hunter wound up starting somewhere out in the galaxy over there and this is a big planet this adjacent to my home that has a bunch of crosslinks so it just is a natural fit that the AI would uh, kind of naturally cluster there now the warden is moving to do what it's supposed to do which is defend um, you know planets that are um, belonging to the AI. And so I'm going to go ahead and take down this command station right now. And that automat So by the way, if you're wondering how to scout, that's it. You take down the AI's um, command stations and you're able to scout. Um, we automated a lot of that stuff because it was really important um, to keep the game flow going and the, the endless scouting micro that could happen was just kind of ridiculous so um, you can tell I start trailing off when I'm getting uh, distracted by mental math here trying to decide if I can win against this force I'm really not sure 
I'm gonna go ahead and take out this guard post here so they definitely don't get any more reinforcements there and so they stop shooting at me. Um, and then let's go back to beating on the warden. Now ideally, if I can whittle the warden down enough, they'll just leave and they'll regroup and come back later to bother me. This is not a terribly un unlucky start. This is just difficulty nine. Um, so, I mean, I'm going to lose again before too terribly long either, but it's um, not going to be because of luck or something. So my fl strike fleet Zayberg just leveled up. That was my um, fleet number one, the one that I'm using right here. It leveled up partly because it's working off by its own, on its own. As it kills ships, it um, automatically gets uh, more powerful. A lot of most most of the mobile um, offensive oh man Mo most of the offensive uh, ships really aren't benefiting too terribly much from. Uh, fleets leveling up the uh, that is more about turrets and whatnot right now we're going to have a system of perks and whatnot where um, where those ultimately again sorry I get distracted as I'm trying to think about what I'm doing We're going to have a system of perks later on where um, the offensive fleets will get more of a bonus even though they're not leveling up. Uh, even though they're, they're leveling up, but they're not getting a uh, mark level increase for their individual ship lines. Nucleophilic, sure. All right, so you can see the warden is like, eh, I'm really outnumbered. There's not much here anyway. It's part of why I was going after the guard post was trying to dissuade them from... Um, feeling like this is something you even wanted to defend. Uh, I don't know exactly what they're doing or why. Looks like they're planning on guarding Batara. The hunter fleet is coming into Batara and is heading to Murdoch. Okay. Um, not too terribly surprising. I'm going to go ahead and build a military command station. Um by the Murdoch wormhole. Um, you'll notice I did not need a colony ship. Um, I'm going to put these guys in pursuit mode, hit 1 and V. I did not need a um, um, I did not need a um, colony ship because any of your fleet leaders are able to work as a colony ship, a hacker, science kind of science lab etc. Um, the science is mainly generated by the command stations actually so uh, which technically is a type of fleet leader but not mobile. Um, are there subtitles for what the AI says? Not yet. That is something we definitely want to have. Um, can you make it that the settings from your last custom start are saved for the next one? No, that would be really nice. Um, and I meant to, but that did not get, was not something I added yet. Can you elaborate on the scout limit in the options, please? So for the scouting limit, it's basically, um, when you capture a planet, it will automatically explore, um, the adjacent stuff and then some number of other planets that is dependent on exactly what map size you've got. So if it's a... 100 planet map, then it's going to give you a little bit fewer than if it was a 200 planet map. You can adjust um, kind of what the ratios are. So I got, I think, five planets explored. And this is a this is a 100 planet map. Um, and so um, basically, if you want the scouting to happen more quickly or more slowly, you can have it set up for that. Um, this new transport flagship is going to be my second fleet mapped to three. My number two fleet 
is a uh, combat engineer's fleet that has some drones and stuff. And um, right now they're the ones defending my home planet um, as the hunter fleet comes on in. The hunters have um, pike corvettes, not bombers. And um, they're being pretty decently slowed down by my turrets, which are dying and being rebuilt. So I'm not real worried about it. My station keepers are moving to intercept as they should. And I've got a bunch of turrets just just waiting to shoot them when they get close. Um, kind of on the wrong side, unfortunately, for the grenade launchers. But uh, the concussion turrets certainly are able to reach them pretty soon. So... Um, but they're pouring in more and more and more, so, hmm, all right, I retract my statement, I selected fleet number one by hitting one, and then just clicked over here, and here they come, so they're still in, uh, pursuit mode, so they are now ready to run around and do whatever they're going to do, so, um, there are some interesting guardians that the AI has brought in with them. Hmm. These guys flanking me? What are they doing? These this hunter fleet is headed for Gunth. That's what's happening. Okay. I was like, what is happening here? Okay, they changed their mind. <laughs> What happened is that Gunth got a bit stronger here. Um, you zoom back, zoom out far enough, it kind of cleans things up a bit. When you zoom back in more, you can see more things. So Gunth now has um, a mobile strength of cred. Sorry. Um, what's this? A bit. One vanguard of the uh, hunter fleet. Now, the reason why that thing is way over there is that my military command station has knocked it over there. It has knocked back. It's knocked it straight into the asteroid belt, and it's just stuck there. So it may as well just sit there, I guess. Um, you know what? I'm going to put these guys in pursuit mode and let them actually do something. Now, I'm going to plunk down a bunch of pike turrets, beam cannons... Um, hmm, ambush turrets. I'm going to put those near Batara because that seems to be pretty clearly where the AI is going to be coming from. Station keepers, soul frigates, watchman frigates. Um, let's go ahead and plop down some factories. Those will help things build more quickly. Engineers, I should have done from the start. We don't need a matter converter. That would just be um, if you're short on energy, which I'm going to be kind of soon, actually. Um, then you can use that to convert some metal into uh, energy. Um, hmm. Hmm. Okay, yeah, I don't have enough uh, energy for these Watchmen frigates. And that's what's up with that. Now, part of the way to get more energy is to uh, build um a more economic oriented uh, command station logistical will even work that's fine also um but you gotta have somewhere to take oh boy what's going on with Malin? betting marauders yep i have no problem with this i like this global command augmenter here um so when I get this, um, then all of my command stations will get um, more ambush turrets, paralysis minefields, and focus gravity generators in this case. So there's all this procedural stuff all over, all over the place that you can get more of in order to uh, augment your forces. So even if this wasn't a already weakened planet, um, I, I, I feel okay about the marauders there. Um, I'm just kind of letting them do their thing. Why am I going to get involved in this fight right now? It, they're killing each other, which is something I like. Um, but even if there wasn't a weakened planet here, um, for the Global Command Augmenter, that would be worth it for my defensive purposes. There's a wave that's going to be coming against uh, Murdoch in uh, 
about five minutes. Strength nine. What's it? What is it? It is stingrays. Okay. That's. By the way, you can hold C and click on this and see a bunch of information. So, for instance, ship and wave. Oh, there's 210 raptors that are coming. And so we can see these are great for ambushing as they come out of wormholes or as other people come out of wormholes. It really, it's other people come out of wormholes. It's more of a defensive unit, but it's good offensively as well. But like a defensive specialist. Stingrays. Um, that's particularly anti-bubble force field, which is not so great for me. So, um, you know, because bubble force fields are what I'm defending with here. I'm going to take my f ship fleet number one. I'm going to take them out of pursuit mode for now. Notice Malin has been, it's now green. It's been captured fully by the marauders. The AI has been kicked out and they have built themselves a marauder outpost. which looks pretty darn cool, by the way. And um, now I'm going to go steal from the thieves. Now normally my AI progress goes up by 20 for every planet that um, I capture, right? And um, in this particular case I didn't have to pay that cost because the Marauders did it for me. So you might think there's various ways you can game the system with that, but um, you actually can't. I have some debug info turned on, sorry about that. Um, so there's extra stuff here. Capturing this planet would still cost me 20 AI progress. There is AI progress against the minor factions as well. I'm going to go ahead and just take out their thing real quick. Let's focus fire on that and just get rid of it. Die, 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 die. Good. Okay. Now, I'm going to try doing an economic command station here because I want the... Uh, the oh boy, because I want the uh, metal and energy income from that. Um, whether or not I can really maintain that, we shall see. Once I've captured that, I will also have gotten the uh, global command augmenter, and um, the. Um, As you'll notice, um, you can hack this. And so um, basically you have to hold the command augmenter to get its benefits, otherwise your ship cap goes back down. Um, but if you hack it, which in this case costs 60 hacking points of which I only have 60 hacking points, um, then it will um, be mine permanently and I don't have to defend that thing anymore. But I'm not really worried about that. Okay, so now I've got 399 um, in terms of uh, 399,000 energy. So doing okay for a little while. Um, let's go ahead and factory engineers. Hmm, holy crap. Um, There's some scary stuff around here. Um, and I don't know what's scarier. Nimit's pretty scary and Goon is pretty... Pr These are all pretty scary. Nimit was the most scary a while ago, but I don't know that that's really the case right now. Um, if I sent ships over there, I could see what they have. If I built a logistical command station instead, then I'd have permanent vision on it, which would have been one way to go. And they also generate a, a fair bit of energy too. But um, in this particular case, I don't care enough. All right. I'm going to put some there, some here. No, I'm just going to put it all there because I only have one. Um, I'm going to put most of my defenses around this. I should have moved my command station over here. That was stupid. I'm going to put one force field generator there, one force field generator there, two watchman frigates. 
paralysis minefields. Yeah, I'll stick these around in a minute. Um, gravity generator, that slows them down. I'm going to stick that here. Because then if they're coming from those directions, they wind up getting into the field. Um, let's see. What makes the Guardians interesting here? Um, depends on which... Uh, um, if you're asked, if I made a comment about it, uh, it may have been because there were some tractor guardians that were dragging me off. Um, the guardians in particular, um, starships are quote unquote gone in this game. Instead, we have what we call frigates because that seemed a little more appropriate for what their size is. So starships from the first game have become frigates and then guardians are kind of like frigates, but a little bit bigger and they have a bunch of abilities and are singularly strong in ways that, um, a lot of other uh, ships or not, but in a generalized sense, um, we went back and forth during the beta in terms of, uh, you know, for a while there was a lot of emphasis on really big ships, um, particularly the fleet leaders and so on, and that just didn't feel like AI war. And so um, we were like, you know what, it's, this has always been mainly about really big battles between lots of little strike craft type uh, ships. And so we put more and more focus into that. Um, and um, so that's not to say that Guardians aren't interesting, but what I will say is that a lot of the things that make Guardians interesting are also things that are granted to um, pretty much... There wasn't... It, for a while it was tempting to say, okay... Only guardians can do X, Y, Z certain things. And there's a few things that are that way, uh, like some of the zombification stuff and some of the really big like beam weapons, because that just isn't appropriate for like little strike craft. But for the most part, we spread things around a lot so that there's interesting strike craft versions of stuff and interesting guardian versions. To some extent that did dilute the cool factor of um, guardians on their own, but that's, uh, I feel like that was a worthwhile trade-off. It feels more like AI war. And um, there's just kind of coolness all the way up and down without it having particular spikes. I think as we get into post-release stuff and expansions and whatever, we will probably, as we add more ship abilities, we'll probably spread them around a little bit differently. For me, the really cool factor are the other factions. And you've already seen the Marauders in action, for instance. I hope we get to see the Nanocost. I'm actually looking for them now. I don't see any Nanocost nearby, which is a shame. Um, the uh, hmm, raid engine over there, Technology Vault, that's nice. Um, another Technology Vault, that one ambushed, that one was disruptive. Um, Warden Fleet's hanging out over there at the moment, apparently. Or it's a Warden Fleet base anyway. It's one of their places they like to hang out. Uh, alarm post, another advanced research station. Hmm. Another Warden Fleet base here. There's a uh, Citadel that I can get, which is very strong. Um, but, boy, that is a rough planet. Hmm. Um, Okay. Notice I'm not playing on 4x speed this time, and so I'm doing a little bit better. There's another transport flagship over here, which I can capture, which will give me some parasites, MLS, MLRS, Corvettes, Raiders, etc. Um, that seems like a worthy goal. I've been somewhat just hanging out on this planet while things build, and I'm just kind of chatty. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and send these guys over to Nimet and we will see what happens. This is my first fleet. If my if I need to, then I will bring my third fleet over. For now, I think I'm going to take my third fleet and send it over to Murdoch. Um, what we got going on over here? So the real strength of this, still 19. Cool. 
Um, grenade launcher stuff. Let's go ahead and just clear those out. And I'm an impatient sort of guy, so I'm going to put this on double speed. By the way, if you feel like the game is too fast and things are getting away from you, you can put it on something like half speed. This is half speed now. So if you want it to be nice and stately, go for it. You can put it down to... That's it. Half speed is as low as it goes. I experimented with uh, tenth speed, but boy, that felt not right. Marauders attacking the Met. Nice. Thank you, Marauders. Um, anyway, so back up to at least 1.0 speed, and really, I want 2.0 speed. All right. Um, now, on the Met, I, I am adjacent to some factories, so I am still getting stuff. Uh, not on that one. That's not mine. On this one, I am be easier to shoot over here. On this one, I am still getting um, my ships constantly rebuilt. As you can see, I've got 50 out of 50 of my V-Wing, 60 out of 60 of my fusion bombers. You might notice those caps are higher than they used to be, and that's because of uh, uh, the mark level upgrades. These guys are just duking it out over there, and like I said a while ago, I don't really feel inclined to go and get involved. Um, one thing you'll notice, there's a 40 plus on this thing, and that's showing you what's inside the stealth guard post. You can hold C and click on it and get this screen. So here's the main ship, and here's what's inside this reinforcement point. There's 17 raiders, 18 raptors, four metabolizing gang saws, eight stingrays. So if I go over there and aggro that thing, then they're going to come out and start attacking me. Um, Gunth is going to be attacked pretty shortly. Military command station, a lot of turrets. They're going to be coming out of this wormhole here. You can tell because it's red. They'll be there in 30 seconds. Strength of 12. Grenade launcher corvettes, corvettes inhibiting Tesla corvettes. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and take my three fleet and bring it back over here. Just in the nick of time. Just to make this easier on myself. Factories went down like instantly, but that's okay. I've got factories on the neighboring planet, so my three fleet is still able to uh, rebuild stuff. Now, my three fleet has like Pike Corvettes, Avalid of Gatlings. The Pike Corvettes, those could do with being uh, um, marked too. So I'm going to go ahead and upgrade my disruptive weapons here. Seems like a worthwhile thing to do. Um, mm, 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 no, no. Ablative Gatlings and whatnot, and the V Wings. I got a lot of those. Yeah, sure. Um, ambush. Nope. Okay. So, all my fleets are a little bit stronger now. Three fleet, go back to Murdoch. Nimit is not owned by anybody anymore. Uh oh. I just sent my three fleet over here told them to go back home. All right. Oops. They didn't get the order, the memo, in time. Three fleet home. Thank you. Murdoch it is. All right. So there's still um, eight strength here of the enemies, partly because they're Mark II and partly because there's a mess load of stuff inside these, a bunch of stingrays and so on. It's important that I engage these one at a time. So I just aggroed that one and some guys popped out. And so I need to go over to mess with them. Um, that's Strike Fleet Venute. Go home, Venute. <laughs> Oops. Now that their help isn't welcome, but not right now. All right. Uh oh. All right. So as you can see, part so you can be outgunned at a planet, and you have two advantages. 
Advantage number one, you're able to rebuild constantly, whereas the AI is only able to be rebuild much more slowly. Advantage number two is you can divide and conquer. These guys, the stealth guard post over here has not been aggroed, so it's not allowed to come and join in the fight. These guys are fleeing over to Suba, and they are going to um, do I don't know what. Maybe attack me, maybe join the hunters or the warden. Hard to say. So now I've aggroed these guys real thoroughly. And I'm feeling happy enough that um, I'm going to build either a logistical or economic. So 400,000 energy from economic. Logistical gives 200,000. There's a bunch of different things in terms of what... Um, what inherent turrets and whatnot they get. Um, I'm feeling like I'm going to do a logistical because it's kind of halfway between a um, military and economic in a lot of ways. Um, once I capture this planet, um, then I will pay the AI progress for that and you'll see me jump to 70. And um, um, I should also get some more scout intel at that time. And we'll make some new plans. Explored eight planets. So it gave us the list there. So I think I said five before and I, I was incorrect. So currently, it's a bunch of uh, metal harvesters that it's building up. And then it's capturing my four fleet, which I can renumber these if I ever want to, or combine them make my one and my four into one on their own. So there's uh, some guys that keep popping into Gunth and messing with it and dying. There's a wave that's coming. 700 MLRS Corvettes. Well, Jet, that's just lovely. So I'm going to go to my three fleet and I'm going to say, you know what? Back to Gunth, boys. Um, they're still in pursuit mode, so they will do what they do. So my four fleet is building on up. I got parasites, which make me so happy. I've got raiders, which make all my ships in that fleet more uh, quicker. So my four fleet is fun because it's fast, which is wonderful. I all right. Things are going down at Gunth. The fact that I've got a military command station here actually does help quite a bit as it keeps knocking them back. So it makes it harder for them to maintain fire on it. Um, yeah, this was no contest. Home field advantage. Strength estimates you can kind of trust but there is an inherent um incorrectness if you see two uh strength 18 planets you know one of yours and one of the enemies um that does not mean they're necessarily evenly matched because um your ships might have a bunch of bonuses against the types of ships that they have for instance or vice versa so you may wind up with a situation where um, um, numerically you're even, but one of them is really much better at killing the other than the other one. So, um, all right, I've got my one of my four fleets here. Um, Global Command Augmenter on Suba. Last I saw, which was a long time ago, it was a fairly weak planet. So I'm gonna hold shift, push one, in addition to four. And so I've got both of these two strike fleets um, selected now. I'm gonna send them both to Suba. This is not probably the ideal strategy because I'm not really exploring out into the galaxy a lot. And I'm really just kind of getting this corner. Depending on the difficulty level you're playing at, uh-oh, 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 I did not build, uh-oh. Come home, come home. Do not build any turrets here. Got distracted. Um, where did those guys come from? I think they just uh, K 
came in their Marauder ways. All right. We're going to do force field generators. Put those in there. Sentry frigates. Salt frigates. Watchman frigates. The point of the station keepers is to have some mobile stuff that's able to clean up small enemies as they go around. Um... Um, this is an anti-AI zombie ship, um, thanks to my parasites. So, hey, thanks, parasites. Um, all that construction and everything, I did not have to change my selection, so back to Suba we go. And they have strength of 11 over there now. Nifty. Um... Thanks, Pars. Glad it looks fun. Um... Hard to justify making an economic, uh, economic command station given how weak the defenses are. That is true, depending on exactly where in your empire it is. So what a lot of people wind up doing is they wind up um, building um, military or logistical command stations out and about. And then as their empire kind of grows and they've got some interior stuff or as they capture more global command augmenters gcas they wind up building more and more um, um converting their existing command stations over to economic and um at the moment i'm pretty rich um um did i bring what did i bring over here I brought my one, three, and four over here. I wasn't really planning on doing that, but I'm okay with that, I think. What's going on here? Hmm. All my turrets here are still under construction. All right, I'm going to take my three fleet and bring them over to Nemet. I can hold control and left click there. And now also see what's going on. Now these guys able to help out and you'll notice these black things that are coming those are anti-a zombies that I'm creating based off of uh, the parasites that I have gotta love some parasites that's for sure um, uh oh Malin has a ton of stuff on it what is going on in Malin that's not good three fleet come you know, I have a name. Um, Venute, get over there. <laughs> All right. What's going on in Suba? All right. This is generally ill-advised, but I'm putting them in pursuit mode on this planet because I overmatched them that much. Um, I'm also going to hit CB. Nope. I don't have any bombers, apparently. Um, I do. I need to make a hotkey for that, apparently. All right, so I've just selected all my bombers, and it's like, the enemy's gate is down. Go get the command station over here. You don't have to select things at a fleet level. You can still select at a smaller level. Tachyon Sentinels, not worried about that. One of the nice things about the economic command stations is they do have um, some pretty decent um, force fields. Mm. This is quite the running battle over here at Malin. Yeah, um, Badger and I have some pretty cool ideas for the... Uh, Nemesis and so on. Um, the initial design document that was something that Keith had put together is something that um, I feel like would be just too overpowered against us, the humans. Um, and so the you know biggest inspiration is definitely hybrid hives because uh, 
those were um, moving my flagship over here so that anything that pops out pops out here um, But yeah, the uh, the hybrid hive should be pretty interesting. The equivalent of hybrid hives in the form of the devourer should be pretty interesting. That was certainly a favorite feature in the first game. All right, I'm gonna do something really arrogant, maybe. Um, no, I'm not. I was gonna. I was thinking about building an economic command station here, but I'm gonna do military um, because it's right next to this nightmare. Um, I feel like I'm just kind of constantly wandering around in my backyard at the moment which you know has some pros and some cons but um it's going to be a little nasty trying to get over here to uh hudak because it's a mark 5 planet and um i do not have very many mark 5 things yet um let's get some text going here some more text uh ambush still not worth it Concussion. All right, what are the turrets I'm getting from this um, GCA here? So let's see. Paralysis minefield, beam cannon. Eh. Okay, so I'm really tempted to go for one of these. Um, hmm, actually. I can't resist. Parasites. Okay. Um, nothing like stealing the enemy to use against the enemy. Alright, we're going to do Parasites again. Um, seems like I'm doing well. Uh, isn't it? Seems like, you know, maybe I'll win this thing. Like, I'm, I'm coming through and, and things are going well. Uh, it's a lie. The I'm the I the AI progress is 105. Um, I'm monitors detecting guns. What else is happening? Ah, I missed that that wave was coming. Crap. Three fleet, Venus, get over here. That might hold out. Till they get there. Wait, where'd they go? I was not paying close attention. There's no way I killed them all. So they left. Where'd they go? They probably went to Alst. All right, Malin is the next into the chopping block. So, Venute, head on over there. It's clear what three's role is becoming. All right, one and four. Go poke the hornet's nest. I can't keep this up indefinitely because the AI will get strong enough. Notice I've not really been seeing the hunter or the warden terribly much. Um, the warden, <laughs> good God. The warden is over here on Batara. <laughs> oh my dear lord and Hudak had something going on is that what is this and the warden's over here wow um it's a blood bath all right run 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 go home run 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 all right, that was interesting. All right, so now things have gone grainy. You'll notice I can still see the ships that are moving around that existed the last second that I had any ships here. And I can see them move around, but I can't see any new ships that might arrive. I can see them leave, that's it. But it was 103, holy cow. I've got that in my backyard. Um. Wow. Oh! Didn't even see what happened. And I'm done. What happened? 
Holy cow. The hunter. I told you. Did I not just say that's that's not the hunter? It's not even the hunter. What is this? Where do these guys come from? What did I do? All right. So these are Mark One, Mark Two, for the most part. I will have to replay the footage and see. Oh, yep. Yeah. They came in. They got Malin, and then they immediately went over there. Although that can't be all that happened. There was a lot higher force over here. So I have a couple of theories. One is that I may have stirred up some threat fleet in general from uh, um, ah, that doesn't make any sense though from Hudak, but those would have been Mark V ships showing up. So that can't have been it. Maybe somehow or other something got stirred up at Guha, but um, something released a bunch of Sentinels, which I didn't notice, and they came over here. Now the Sentinels um those uh i'm guessing it was mostly just waves that's really what i'm guessing the strategy that i was using is something that if you're a decent strategy game player and you're mostly paying attention like i was mostly paying attention you can do that at say difficulty five you'll have a good time um you what would have happened on a difficulty five game is I probably would have consolidated these planets around here. And then I would have started doing what's called like deep striking out and taking like this planet or taking this planet and really going, going way out. This would have been my little corner of an empire. And I would have had a planet or two that were exposed on the outside that the AI would beat against. And I would convert all these back end ones to economic command stations and I would be relatively safe. Finding that there's a Mark V planet kind of near you is a bummer. Mark VII is the highest, but it's certainly not insurmountable, especially not normally. Sometimes it's good to get those things sooner rather than later. Um, you know, before they get too strong, clip them off when they're when they're young. Other times you need to get teched up more, and even though they grow, you grow more, and you bring in more fleets and get rid of them. Um, at, at difficulty nine, this sort of strategy is utterly inappropriate for the sort of game that I, you know, the sort of enemy that I was just facing off against because they outnumber me way too much, and they only get stronger as the AI progress goes up, and I can't afford to take that much territory um, for the amount of gain that I was getting out of it. The global command augmenters are nice, but I need probably more offensive fleets than I was getting, and I need to be a little more choosy about which offensive fleets I get. But there's this balance between do you take a planet that you can defend and hold that you can keep the science from, which that's a resource that gets exhausted after it's gathered. And so, you know, as long as you hold it long enough to get that and then let go, it's fine. But more importantly, do you hold it long enough to keep the energy generation, um, you know, to keep all those fleets running? So there's a there's a trade-off of stuff that you've got to be able to hold and stuff that you know you're not going to be able to hold but has something really valuable on it that you want to take. And I pretty much just focused on things that I was probably going to be able to hold and it had good value stuff on it, but not ridiculous value. Uh, if I'd been really smart, I would have gone, that's an outguard beacon, I would have gone, well, I also would have dealt, done something with the risk analyzers, that's where some stuff came up. Um, the, uh, but I probably, if I'd been a little bit smarter, I would have done some existing deep strikes looking for some uh, um, data centers out there. If you're wondering where data centers are, you can easily just go to the Intel tab versus trying to thumb around the map. That's a real pain in the rear. And so you can go uh, destroy a data center on Hearth. Okay, here's one right there. So that's one that's pretty close. Here's one, Lusitania, that's even closer. Um, a coprocessor on Omnog, pretty close. So those sort of things um, 
would have been good targets to keep the AI progress low. There's a whole lot of strategy that I was not using that you would need to use in order to win on difficulty nine. And if you wanna see some people doing that, there are people who are videoing themselves or who are doing after action reports who you will note are way more skilled than I am. Um, a difficulty five or so, this strategy is, is fine for pretty much anybody. I might could pull this off at difficulty seven. Um, maybe, but definitely not at nine. Um, and, um, if what happened to me didn't get me, then the hunter fleet was almost certainly going to come back and be a big problem, you know, um, sometime soon. I'm kind of curious where they were lurking. Um, oh, well, um, there actually are alarm blares and sound effects when your home command station is under attack. Um, the, uh, oh, there was an usurper. I missed the usurper. Um, um, so the, the AI was trying to uh, reconquer a thing. So um, this is one of the perils of playing with your sound more or less off. There are allow um, alarm blares when your uh, home command station is under attack. The downside is that it can go down pretty quickly if it's overwhelmed with that much force. Um, so, yeah. Um, do I still have plans for the revamp of the planets tab? Yes, I do. Um, I've written up um, some things on that, but essentially I want to move the fleets that are at your current planet off the fleets tab onto the planets tab at the top. And then I want to have it so that um, you can have essentially this view where it's like allies, enemies, you um, with the total strengths at the planet, but where it never combines icons from unlike factions or where you can have it broken out by um, factions. So it's not just enemies, it's um, the AI Sentinels, the AI Hunter Fleet, the AI Warden Fleet, the Marauders, whatever, things like that, which are more useful for in either multiplayer or in um, multifactional uh, stuff. So the... Uh, The AI taunt, so yeah, there is an AI taunt which gets played when your command station is under attack. We have, so there's a couple of things that get played. Um, one, it, it taunts you, and that one, I know everybody turns that down, it's hard to understand right now. Um, but there's a, for the like uh, woman that like helps you with uh, advice, she, um, uh, we recorded like a year ago a bunch of new um, sound prompts with her and um, Alicia Harris. And um, we just haven't implemented those yet. Uh, Pablo did finish splitting those up and doing the audio processing on them. But we'll get those in there soon. But there's also like a kind of alarm noise. It's like wah, 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 that plays. And that's on its own audio channel. Um, but I didn't just turn down the combat. I turned down everything. Um, and that is definitely something that shows how there are visual indicators as well that your home is under attack up there at the top, but it's not like red and flashing blinking. And, um, I think we're going to need to do something visual that doesn't like cause seizures, but that also is really visually noticeable. Um, my fiance and I are playing Stardew Valley um, a lot of times before we go to bed, and there's like the little visual notifier of the little sleep bubble that comes up right next to your character, which you are looking at your character. And it's a really good visual cue, and we still miss it and pass, it, pass out in the field sometimes. So it's kind of like no matter what you do, if you're not just absolutely like throttling the player's attention, sometimes it's going to get missed. And when it's a game ending situation, that's unfortunate. And I don't 
have any bad feelings about anybody who wants to save scum. We do have the auto saves and so on. And um, if you were in a situation like I just was, and you're like, oh, I'm going to go back five minutes so I don't like get caught unawares because I didn't even see that coming. Go for it. I'm not going to judge. Um, the reality is that even if I did that, I had lost anyway. So, yeah. The science hack does get important on higher difficulties, but it's something that is a good point. Um, but that's something you can only do on like neutral planets. You can't do it on AI planets. So marauders are a friend on there because um, if you, uh, that's one way to not have AI progress go up. The marauders take the planet and you go and hack the planet uh, while the marauders don't own it. Um, then you can get some science out in exchange for hacking points, but not in exchange for AI progress. So that can be a really, really big thing big deal there's so many tricks that you can use at the higher difficulties and people have been figuring out more and more and we're always like kind of in an arms race with people to try and deal with whatever they come up with but um but yeah it's uh um it's always a judgment call and don't be afraid to um switch up your tactics as you go like um i was hoping to eventually switch over some of these things like this one that's logistical so hoping to make that an economic and the one that was economic maybe if i had really felt like uh guha was going to be an ongoing problem i might have switched that to be military as well um if i was playing in difficulty seven and ran into this situation it wouldn't have been quite so intense to begin with numerically but there's a good chance that one smart thing would have been to kind of think about it, whether paused or just as I'm doing other stuff and go, you know what? I think it's time for military, 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 economic, uh, maybe capture Alst, um, maybe capture Guha, but not really. This icon here at Alst, that's a risk analyzer. That's a thing that makes the AI progress go up uh, by one every hour. So basically it adds some time pressure to you. And um, if you capture it, then it goes down instead. If you kill it, then it goes up. So there's a reason to capture it and hold it. Um, but if you can't capture it and hold it, then there's just time pressure. Um, that is an added um, faction. And I turn that on specifically. So you don't have to worry about those normally. They make your life way harder and add some time pressure that sometimes people complain is not there. And it's really nice to have that sort of time pressure. I actually agree. But... Uh, yeah yeah the notification boxes have a subtle color to tell you how much trouble you're in that is a tricky thing because i don't necessarily know exactly how much trouble you're in just by the numbers it depends on you know the relative strengths of everything and um the strong against weak against stuff is some help but not a humongous help and it's kind of hard. You'll notice as I was playing and looking at things, I was kind of going, hmm, there's stingrays and I got force field. That's a problem. There's how many of those? They're mark whatever. I'm kind of doing a little bit of mental, not really mental math, but just kind of intuition, kind of going, eh, how much of a problem do I really think that is? I'm guessing that's not, eh, it's probably livable or I need to send fleet three over there. Or, eh, you know, whatever. And, that's something that you kind of just get a feel for with experience and you don't have to have that at you know the lower difficulties when you're just getting started but um as you're ran you know you're not going to start with difficulty nine that's a bad idea um so with experience you kind of get a sense for that sort of thing but from a purely mathematical standpoint and aka something we can calculate and put in the ui for you that's hard because we're going to give you is it better to have false positives of by your archibus you're about to die and you're like oh my god and you go over there and you're like wait that was nothing what's the problem um you know is it going to be a boy who cried wolf situation where like um you just really um start ignoring it when it tells you that things are dire when they're really not or you know do we want false negatives where it's like archibus you're probably fine you're like uh, I disagree with that assessment. I'm sending some fleets right now. Thank you very much. You know, is is it 
you know, which way do you swing? Because you're going to wind up with one or the other. And just how in your face do we get? So um, that's always a challenge. That's for sure. Um, the uh, At some point, I'd be tempted to play um, a game at a more reasonable difficulty level for myself. But um, it's difficult for me to stream that because that lasts many, many hours, even if I'm playing on a accelerated um, speed. And... Um, to some extent, there's, it's fun to be kind of getting my butt kicked around a little bit and seeing what I can carve out. I had, I was about to say earlier, right before I lost, I was like, you know what? I'm going to be happy and consider this game a quote unquote victory if I can capture this corner. Um, you know, I was thinking these three planets down here. I was like, that's, that's the goal I have set for myself. I'm going to call that a quote unquote win. I'm going to lose, but if I can do that before I lose, that'd be nice. And I lost. I didn't get to say it. So, what are you going to do? <laughs> but um, yeah. So I will uh, do more videos of me getting my butt kicked in the future. Um, and there are other people who are making uh, video guides and so forth as well. Um, but I'm around on Discord and the forums, um, you know, periodically. And I'm going to try and get some actual, you know, um, non-communication, non-community management, non-business, like, coding work done. That would be really nice to do. Um, so, all right. Um, unless somebody has any final questions or anything, I think I'm... I'm going to head out. Have I considered reaching out to some more prominent YouTube streamers? Um, yes, we have done that. I have no idea who they are exactly, um, which ones they are, but Eric and Craig are excellent about doing that. We've also had through like key mailers, some people reach out to us. Um, Quill 18, I think we've spoken to. I do not remember. Um, I would love to see them um, do some stuff like that as well. Um, feel free to email arcangames at gmail.com if you've got specific streamers in mind. Um, probably Eric and Craig have already talked to them and or they've reached out to us. I will note that there's a definite situation where a lot of times streamers like to get some degree of familiarity with the game before they stream it so that they feel like they can it's, it's hard to talk and play at the same time. And so if you're learning the game as you go, there's some people that like to do that, stream that. Others like to stream, like, here's my tactics and stuff. So um, there's a lot. We only sent out, like, we've had people with preview, press preview keys for like a year, um, more than a year, I guess, really, since a little more than a year. Um, but review copies we only really gave the review go ahead a week before launch and so that's kind of hobbled some people but uh, it would definitely be nice to get uh, uh, more people streaming it but i'm not in a huge hurry um, it would be nice things are selling well enough at the moment um, i'd like to keep the moment momentum going so to some extent as people come in over time um that'll I'm making this up as I go along. It's always a, you never can tell with the market, but I have a feeling that having, you know, people come in and really seriously look at it over time and do a really good job versus like rushing at it at day, day one launch, that sort of thing. Like last week, I have a feeling that creates more sustained, um, attention and sales and all that. But, um, it's, it's hard to say. So, um, the game looks like it has legs with uh, the player base and, um, you know, financially for us. And so hopefully that's just something that we can continue to kind of push as we get into expansions, as we do the free um, updates, as we add multiplayer and all the various things that, uh, that we do. So would be nice. But um, all right. Um, any last uh, questions or comments before I head on out? <laughs> My 2,526 hours in this game. Good grief. 
All right. Thanks, everybody, for watching. And I will uh, catch up with you guys soon. I'll be around on uh, Discord and getting some... We've got some patches and stuff to come out really soon. So thanks for watching.